Please be aware that this video is intended as an educational resource only and should not be used as personal medical advice. All decisions about the management of your health or condition should be made in conjunction with your specialist or medical professional. So, what is arthroscopy? Arthroscopy is a type of keyhole surgery, a minimally invasive surgical procedure that is performed through small incisions in order to evaluate or treat a variety of conditions. So, what is an arthroscope? An arthroscope is a small tube that contains optical fibers and lenses, with a digital camera that can be inserted into the body, giving doctors a view of inside your joint. To better understand your arthroscopy procedure, we should take a few minutes to learn a little bit about your anatomy, the procedure, the risks and issues involved. Your knee joint is the largest joint in your body and contains four bones and a large collection of ligaments and muscles. The bones are the femur or thigh bone, the tibia or shin bone, and the smaller fibula and the patella or kneecap, and with only the femur and the tibia forming the knee joint itself. Where the femur and tibia meet is covered with articular cartilage, an extremely hard, smooth, slippery surface that allows smooth, pain-free movement in your joints. On both sides of her knee, there are two strips of long, flexible cartilage called the menisci that act as shock absorbers and help minimize friction. The stability of your knee joint is governed by four ligaments, which secure the knee together. These are the medial collateral ligament, or MCL, the lateral collateral ligament, or LCL, providing side-to-side -side support. Then, the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL, and the posterior cruciate ligament, PCL, providing front to rear support. There are also bursas between the skin and the kneecap, the pre-patella bursa, and another above the kneecap, the supra-patella bursa. These are small sacs of synovial fluid, like tiny water balloons, with only a few drops of fluid in them that cushion the knee while it's in motion. Each part of your knee needs to function properly for the knee to work as a whole reasons why you might need a knee arthroscopy. An arthroscopy is often required for diagnosis and evaluation. Patients experiencing unexplained pain, swelling, stiffness or instability in a joint that has been unresponsive to conservative or non-surgical treatment may undergo a knee arthroscopy to determine the cause or condition. Further, Arthroscopic surgery may be required or suggested for one or more of the following reasons. Debridement of joint surfaces or loose bodies. Debridement is the medical term for removal of dead, damaged or infected tissue to improve the healing potential of the remaining healthy tissue. Typically, an arthroscopy could be performed to remove bone chips or torn cartilage debris causing pain and decreased mobility or a condition such as arthritis that can cause the breakdown of tissue or bone in the joint. Removal of adhesions. Adhesions are scar tissue that is built up limiting movement and causing pain. Removal of bone spurs. A bone spur is a tiny pointed outgrowth of bone, typically caused by injury, tendonitis, arthritis, that damages the ends of the bone, causing pain and limiting joint mobility. Partial synovectomy, removal of portions of inflamed synovum or joint lining in patients with inflammatory arthritis can help decrease the patient's pain. However, a complete synovectomy requires an open and larger incision. Trauma repair, the repair of fractures or torn ligaments caused by trauma. We begin with your diagnosis. Firstly, your surgeon will examine and evaluate your symptoms to ensure a proper diagnosis in order to provide the best treatment outcome. Your orthopedic surgeon will discuss and record your medical history, perform a physical examination, request diagnostic studies such as x-rays or MRI. An MRI is magnetic resonance imaging where magnetic and radio waves are used to create a more detailed computer image of soft tissue, nerves and ligaments. Your orthopaedic surgeon could also suggest more conservative treatment options such as prescribing anti-inflammatory medications, 
referring you for physiotherapy, suggesting rest, suggesting you limit certain activities, or an injection of steroids and analgesics directly into the joint. During your procedure, during your surgical procedure, an arthroscope will be inserted into your joint to assess and repair the damage. Even though the arthroscope and other surgical instruments are used are very small, typically only 3 to 4 millimeters in diameter, the high definition camera built into the arthroscope displays a high quality image on a large screen, allowing the surgeon to see every part of the joint and assess the type and amount of injury and correct or repair the problem as needed. The major benefits of arthroscopic surgery compared to traditional surgery include less pain, much smaller incisions, faster healing time, less scarring, lower infection rate, minimal soft tissue trauma, faster return to full mobility, and is typically performed as outpatient or day surgery. Your surgery will be performed in a hospital operating room under general or local anaesthetic, depending on you and your surgeon's wishes. To begin your surgery, your surgeon will make two or three very small incisions, only about three or four millimeters each, around the joint. Each of these incisions is called a port and result in very small scars that normally will be barely noticeable. Then a blunt hollow tube called a trochar is inserted into each incision or port. The trochar holds the incision open and allows access without the potential for additional trauma caused by the insertion and removal of the arthroscope and any other surgical instruments. Then, the arthroscope is inserted through the trochar to view the joint. A sterile solution is pumped in to enlarge the viewing area like a balloon, allowing the surgeon a clear field of view and to work. Using images from the arthroscope's display screen, your surgeon will assess the knee joint to determine the extent of your injuries and perform the required surgical procedures as needed. After treating your condition, the port or incisions are closed by suturing with stitches or with surgical tape. And best of all, arthroscopy is proven to be much less traumatic on the muscles, ligaments and tissues than more traditional methods of open surgery. After surgery, your surgeon will provide you with a post-operative course of action to aid your recovery. This will depend upon the type of surgery performed. Your post-operative plan may include specific instructions regarding your lifestyle, activity or rehabilitation, prescription medications to keep you comfortable at home, instructions about wound care and bathing. Typically, you may shower once the dressings are removed unless otherwise directed by your surgeon and physiotherapy if required to restore normal function and strength. Benefits and risks. As with any surgery, there are always potential risks. Your decision to proceed with the surgery is made because the advantages of the surgery outweigh the potential disadvantages. It is important that you are informed of these risks before the surgery takes place. Complications can be medical, general, or specific to the surgery. Medical complications include those of the anaesthetic and your general well-being. Potential complications. It should be noted that the vast majority of patients suffer no complications following surgery. However, complications can occur with any surgery and may include allergic reactions to medications, blood loss requiring transfusion with a low risk of disease transmission, heart attack, strokes, kidney failure, pneumonia, and bladder infections. Complications from the use of nerve blockers, such as infection or nerve damage, serious ongoing medical problems or concerns, leading to prolonged hospitalization, or very rarely, death. Specific complications. Infections. Infections at the incision or port site, or a more serious infection at the surgery's location. Nerve damage, tingling, pain and weakness from nerve damage or nerve trauma. This may be temporary or permanent and can cause numbness. Hemarthrosis, excess bleeding into the joint or surgery site. This may require additional arthroscopic surgery to irrigate the joint and evacuate or drain the blood. 
blood clots or deep vein thrombosis. These typically form in the calf muscles and can travel to the lung, causing a pulmonary embolism. These can occasionally be serious or even life-threatening. If at any stage you get calf pain or shortness of breath, you should notify your surgeon immediately. The failure to relieve pain. This is rare, but may occur, especially if pain is coming from other areas, such as the spine. There are risk factors that can negatively affect your healing after surgery, including general ill health, poor nutrition, smoking, obesity, diabetes, age, over 60, alcoholism, chronic illness, and steroid use. Weighing this all up and having a good understanding of the procedure is important. If you have any doubts, questions or queries, please consult your specialist or medical professional. If you'd like to find out more about online medicals videos or find out about getting your own branded content, contact Online Medical today, one 900 155